well, we did have a, a council meeting the month after I got back. A couple of the councillors put in a motion forward that council filed a complaint. Personally receive any fuel. I personally did not receive any accommodations. Mayor Ugolini here with Rebel News, bringing you the voice of a now punished municipal council member who partook in the freedom convoy that took to the nation's capital earlier this year to finally have their voices heard after two long years of being disregarded by every institution and official meant to serve and protect the interests of the public. See, anyone who didn't tow the party line, anyone who spoke up and questioned the status quo about the COVID narrative was gaslit and told to simply trust the science. And Harold Jonker was no different. He partook in the Freedom Convoy as a concerned citizen, a worried father, and an upset business owner, a business that happens to be a trucking company. He's one of the owners and operators of a trucking company called Jonker Trucking. It's a family business started by his father in 1993. So not only is Jonker a trucker himself, but he's also a town council member in the Gainsborough area of the West Lincoln Township. It's a township that is just southeast of Hamilton. But for now, the vilified act of protesting unscientific and unprecedented government response to a virus has Jonker under fire. A complaint was launched against him to the Integrity Commissioner of Ontario. Only after council voted against investigating him, and the commissioner found that he was in breach of two sections of the Code of Conduct. Here to discuss it with me directly is Harold Jonker. Check it out. Early on in the COVID um, situation that we find ourselves in, we had concerns as a family. It didn't affect us financially, but we knew this is wrong. Like, how 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 can you say to somebody, um, sorry, you're not essential, you can't go to work? Everybody's essential because they provide for themselves or they provide for their families and their loved ones. So that was already a concern. And when... Um, and, and as a as a company, we um, we're, we're we we care about our community and what's going on, and it it, it didn't seem right. A lot of things didn't seem to be go, uh, right what they were doing, and we decided when this came up, this convoy to Ottawa, which was going to be a protest that respected the law, and yeah, it, it wasn't a protest that seemed like when we first looked at it that, hey, this is this is legit. This looks legal. This is something that we can get, get involved with. Well, and then fast track here. So you have been involved now as the local council member in West Lincoln. You've had a, an integrity commission complaint against you. How did that come to fruition? Um, how that came about fruition, I'm not 100 percent sure. I you know the um well we did have a, a council meeting the month after i got back a couple of the councillors put in a, a, a motion forward that council filed a complaint that was defeated five to two so i i um which was i was very thankful for somebody and anybody in within west lincoln can file a complaint and the integrity commissioner looks at this complaint and would and decides themselves is this deemed to be something that we need to investigate or not obviously they they deemed it to be a complaint that um was in their eyes deemed to be a legitimate complaint and they did an investigation and that's where we find ourselves today and they found in that investigation that you broke two sections of the code of conduct. So the first one, apparently, was the, the duty of loyalty to residents. What's the feedback been like on the ground there in terms of what the residents are saying to you as their elected representative? Um, the feedback has been nothing but positive. The, uh, the council is getting emails sent to them. Um, voicing their frustration on what they did and what they decided to do with this with this recommendation and the, that and that they you know accepted the recommendations 
So we're, we're getting inundated with emails where I'm personally be getting emails saying, thank you for what you've done. Continue to stand for, for what you stand for. And it's, it's actually been mind boggling. I, uh, people are emailing the township from, from all across country and it's been all but supporting what I did, not supporting what they decided to do um, last week, Monday. The other thing that you are in said to be in breach of was because you took, you accepted gifts or benefits. Can you tell me about these gifts or benefits that you've alleged to have received? Well, I, I've been alleged to, to receive benefits in the, in in the fact that I um, got fuel, that I received food and accommodations. And I do know, like, I didn't personally receive any fuel. I personally did not receive any accommodations. I did personally eat some sandwiches, that bacon and egg sandwiches, hamburgers. Um, I, I did see the one time that there's um, V8 at, at one of the uh, camps, which is so good for you that I took a, took a couple of those cans and, but I never really received any gifts from residents of West Lincoln. And that's where I'm a little bit confused. Like when I look at it myself, I looked at it as saying, okay, I'm not going up there as a counselor of West Lincoln. I'm going up there as a businessman, as a uh, father, as a, um, parent that's concerned about where the where what this is affecting my children and that's where I decided to go up there and I worked very hard as as one of the captains that ended up doing quite a few interviews I I I worked very hard to make sure that it wasn't that I didn't let anybody know that I was a counselor of West Lincoln and that was not my intent at all mm -hmm. now this seems so futile, but regardless, the Council of West Lincoln decided to vote to penalize you based on this Integrity Commission investigation. What did that penalization look like? Um, basically, I've, I've lost 30 days of pay, which at the end of the day doesn't account to uh, too much money. It definitely does affect my income. Um, I, it's not going to hurt me. I'm, I'm thankful that I, I, I have a business that um, does okay. And um, I have a wife that's very uh, frugal. So we're gonna get through this, no problem. That, that, uh, so the 30 days of pay, if I, if I decide not to fight this, the 30 days of pay is something that won't affect me too badly. The, um, and the gifts that I have received, I, I've looked over really at the end of the day, I personally received and it's not going to be a lot. So it's just going to be a matter of writing down what I did receive uh, and and submitting that. And, you know, um, a, the um, community care is going to get that amount with a good cause. So it's not a terrible thing, but it's the principle that I'm struggling with that I got to decide. Do I fight this? Do I? talk to a lawyer and I have talked to one and I'm talking to another one tomorrow and and I'll make my decision tomorrow of 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 my actions going forward well I'd love to be kept in the loop on that how you decide to proceed here and I mean if you could put a ballpark number on the amount that you're on the hook for here in terms of you know receiving a couple of cans of v8 maybe some breakfast coffee a little bit of fuel what would you guesstimate that to be I'm, I'm going to guesstimate it to be under $300. It's definitely, you know, I, I didn't eat, I did not get restaurant quality food. It was great tasting food, but when you really want to consider what's a cl uh, couple slices of bread and uh, an egg and two slices of bacon, if you look at what you buy, pay for that in the grocery store, what's that actually cost? It doesn't cost a lot. So it's going to be, I'm pretty sure it's going to be under $300. I haven't exactly figured it out that. Um, and then there's also the fact that for five of the days, my family was uh, at a cottage that we had booked for uh, a Santa Claus gift way before we went up to Ottawa. So I was actually there for five days. So 
I didn't need, I didn't get any food there. I did get some coffee. So yeah, I, I didn't, the expenses, the, the gifts that I cost were, were minimal. I did, I did, uh, I do have to claim that I got an, a, a pair of underwear and a pair of socks. And, uh, the one day I'm like going through the tent and going, I could use, uh, some clean clothes here. So I, I did grab that. So, you know, that, that'll be on there. I haven't actually looked my wife goes shopping, so I don't know what a pair of underwear and a pair of socks cost, but um, I'm sure even if you buy a package of socks and then divide that by six or whatever it is, that's what it's going to be. And same with the uh, the undergarment, I should say, whatever you want to call it. And um, so, yeah, there was and, and there was there's probably a couple of toques that I grabbed for my kids the one day they were there. So I guess I'm guessing I should claim them. I didn't personally get a toque, but my kids did. So there will be that there as well. So. And I, but, uh, I apologize. I, I laugh there because it just seems so ridiculous. But I want to get back to this original article that was sent to me, published by the Canadian Press, because in there they say something really interesting. They said that you were a vocal representative and leader of the convoy, including after the point that the protest was deemed unlawful. Can you tell me at what point was the protest deemed unlawful and by whom? Well, that's what I find very interesting. I was there from day one, definitely. I was actually in liaison with two Ottawa police. The day we came in, they showed us where to park. To me, that's legal. We were parked by the Ottawa police. The whole time we were working with the police, it was um, a very large crowd. There was, um, I don't know how many trucks there. I tried to get them counted the first week and I think it was over 500 and some vehicles and it was just so big that it was pretty much impossible to be connected with everybody and and to keep track of everybody. Um, on February 7th, in the Supreme Court, a judge declared that, of Ontario, declared that this was a law, lawful protest on the 14th, saying, thing a judge from the Ontario Supreme Court declared it a, a legal protest so and that was on the Monday the Friday all of a sudden the police are coming in and trying to kick us out so we were pretty confused right and I'm still somewhat confused we never had the roads blocked the police did people were complaining I even had an interview with a reporter and he was saying I'm, I'm staying with a friend of mine and he can't get to the um, the 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 art school that is right by byword market well I'm walking by this byword market every morning every night he could drive there the perception was being twisted the the, the trucks weren't even there it was barricaded off by the police, but you could still drive up to the police officers. And if you said, I'm going to the school here, they would have let him in. It was actually the police that had to shut down, not the truck drivers. And there was times on, on Wellington Street, I remember standing on the, the lane that was open, right beside all the trucks and going, hey, guys, we shouldn't stand on this, this lane of traffic, right? Um, let's move on to the sidewalk. It was just... So the, the roads were open. And I think that the the media, these are all things that you would have never heard about in the mainstream media. Is there anything th that I've missed here, Harold, that we haven't touched on that you'd like to to clear the record on? Yeah, as as somebody that partook in this this event. I went there as a Christian. I went there as a as a father and as a husband and as a business owner, and it was something we worked very hard to keep. Was it that we, that it was peaceful, that it was respectful and that it stayed clean. We, we kept the streets cleaner than, um, than, than, than the, the city of Ottawa could have. We had salt, we had shovels. I had a driver up on parliament Hill, a 71 year old driver that drives for us that wanted to join he drove one of our trucks. He's shoveling the sidewalks. We were feeding the homeless. We we were part of something that was unbelievable. And I think at the end of our, um, at the end of the statements at, at town council, I, I said I was thankful for being part of something that was unbelievable. 
and and it's true i i'm thankful to be able to be part of something that was unbelievable and i think one of the only regrets that i do have is that i could not keep up with the phone calls and emails like sorry i shouldn't have brought this up but the hopelessness that you people were expressing was numbing was mind-boggling i remember a phone call to a young lady or i perceived as a young lady in welland and um that phone call i wish i had kept it and and called her back and i because i was getting so many phone calls so many emails i was unable to and um i hope she's still okay and uh, um yeah that's i have no regrets just just that i could have kept connected with people who needed to be connected with and it was impossible. The hopelessness that Jonker expresses is one thing that really stood out to me while reporting on the trucker convoy. The movement gave good, loving Canadians hope once again. It restored their faith that Canadians can come together in times of need and distress to support one another. All of this in spite of government-fueled division and hate. And the community behind Jonker is reinforcing just that. Instead of being bitter about what's happened to him, they've taken it upon themselves to facilitate generous donations to the West Lincoln Community Care Center with food and other essential donations. That sentiment right there epitomizes the kind of people that went to Ottawa back in January and February of this year. For Rebel News, I'm Tamara Ugolini. There is a fun and interactive way for our viewers at home to help us with the increasing costs of running an independent, not government funded media company, and that's simply by purchasing our swag. We feature new designs all of the time at rebelnewsstore.com, and your order always qualifies for free global shipping. But right now, you can buy two unisex t shirts and get the third one free by using code SUMMER. Head on over to rebelnewsstore.com and check out our deals and our new designs there today.